my DMs are full of the people who are like, I lived as a woman and now three years later, I realized that I might just be a sissy cross-dresser. And now I feel bad. Like I have countless DMs of people who wow. are like, I feel bad for taking up these space. Now that I, wow. I speak out a lot more about Great. it, I speak with them and they're like, you know, I shouldn't, it, you know, in the egg has to be protected from the sperm. Hey everyone, I caught myself another one. Super excited about this conversation. It's very important. So sit down, grab a coffee, because here we go. And with that, thanks for liking, subscribing, joining this channel, helping me to get these messages out there. It's actually working. I see it. People are hearing us and we're building this amazing, strong community fighting back against this nonsense. So remember, save the kids, people, and women's <laughs> rights. So here we go. I have this beautiful human being named Cobra and Cobra's going to introduce herself and then we can move forward. Hey, Cobra. Thank you for joining me <laughs> um, big fan uh i discovered you around the time i got into fetish um i won't really i'm not gonna say my age early 30s but i it was about over 10 maybe 15 years ago wow. that i got into just interested in fetish and through there into the adult community just right. always obsessed with the psychology of like the deviant stuff um, so the reason I reached out was because I make, I have fallen into because of demand mm -hmm. making sissification content great. great, and feminization, uh, female dominatrix content. So that to, to kind of clarify what that is, right. cross-dressing is under the umbrella of sissification because okay. sissification also usually entails like a cluster of paraphilias fetishes mm -hmm. including chastity cage um small pp humiliation mm -hmm. um pegging and some things that bleep them out if i say i, I, I don't <laughs> feel very free here and yes things that i know need to be bleeped i will but i don't want you to <laughs> hesitate to speak because it's important that you have the platform to say all of this because it's gonna <laughs> people and i also just want to say this before you move on people look whether or not you agree with what she does or all that please put that aside because <laughs> what she's about to tell you is extremely important and it will plug into what is going on today it doesn't mean you have to like it doesn't mean you have to agree with it it means you have to hear it in a way that says oh now i see what's going on so so mm -hmm. with that thanks cobra for for all of this it's very important that you explain the i try to explain it but it's going to be so much better coming from you so anyway yeah paraphilias right the 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 data is there that's what i have like and the demand is there so paraphilias are basically the opposite of phobias like a philia is an unusual thing that excites or arouses someone versus a yeah. phobia is like an unusual, like something that wouldn't traditionally uh, scare someone. Right. So I basically study philias and right. specifically um, I've always liked chastity cages, cross dressing, pegging, um, anything with a strap on. Mm -hmm. um, and that has attracted the sissy uh, group to me. So my first sissy video that I made was about four years ago when I started making content. So I, I've been doing in-person dom sessions for many years, but I started making content around the beginning of COVID um, when we all transitioned online. And the first request I ever got was a custom video request um, of role play i do a lot of mommy role play as well mm. it was a mommy role play of mommy turning her son into her daughter wow and they gave me a script they asked you know what to wear and all this and i was like yeah. this is interesting yeah and down the rabbit hole <laughs> I <went. laughs> it's deep it is so deep and it has not stopped and it's just the hill that i'm now dying on um, <laughs> so it's all i freaking talk about and the reason i the the final straw when i reached out to you like i've been watching your po podcast for a very long time 
and just following you in general for a long time. But I have a family friend um, who has a 13 year old daughter and she thought she was a he Mm -hmm. very briefly for like a six month period. Mm -hmm. Long story short was later diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. What a surprise. Yeah. Um, and the way she described it, like we were hanging, it was a holiday. Uh, it was actually this past Easter. Mm-hmm. We were invited to their home and that's when the mom mentioned it. And I was like, no freaking way. <laughs> I'm done. I am done with this stuff. But then I'm, I, I mean, I, I, all I hear about it, I hear about it all the time. I, this, the sissification stuff, I make the content, um, as you know, as role play, for adults because that's you know the intention and then but then i hear this confused mentally ill child getting swept up in this and then i'm so i ended up having uh multiple hour talks with her about this and she said that the group in her middle school and this is in vegas the group in her middle school that's trans non-binary are very like pushy and like they're the cool kids and it's like trendy and all this stuff and when she so she identified for a bit and then she stopped identifying they you know kind of exclude start excluding her just the typical stuff that you keep that we all keep seeing with these sisters and i hate that word these sisters so toxic it's so cult-like totally that is a cult term it is i I study i i grew up in a religious cult Oh, wow. Long story short, wow. to add to the, I'm also an immigrant. Wow. I was born in Ukraine. Wow. I immigrated. I also have Russian family. I immigrated from Azerbaijan, which is the Middle East, on Jewish refugee status. Love you. My, got- my son's dad is Ukrainian, so I'm very close oh. to the Ukrainian community here and yeah. the Russian community. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah there. And and so all parts of me are all kind of. Uh, like at, at war and, oh totally you Very know the, the and the religious thing and stuff so i've had to learn how to separate reality from mm-hmm. ideology that's right growing up with not just religious cult stuff but one of the people who put all these ideas in my head long story short has schizophrenia so i believed a lot of really crazy stuff growing up that I had to unlearn. And now it, I I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in horoscopes. I'm not, I I try to live life with my five senses, like what is here now. Right. And, and yeah, so when this girl said, when this girl said that to me, like within, within like a few days was when I emailed you. (laughs) Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Because what you're saying is Actually, we know it. We talk about it all the time on the channel. This is literally what's happening to these kids. If they're if they're not part of the in crowd, right, then they get ostracized. And that's what happened to her. But how did she do you know how she got out of thinking she was trans? Um, her she has a really strong family support system and she's her family's really well off. They're Russian and religious, so um it was brief, but now she's also doing the therapy. She's on medication for her Great. actual disorder. Great. And, 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 and she doesn't even want to go to school. Anymore. I don't know if it's the same girls, but like <sighs> now she has like no friends and it's oh, like, terrible. it's, it, terrible. it's ugly. It's ugly. Yeah, it is. It's gross. It's these kids mm-hmm. are suffering, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks for, thanks for telling us about that. So let's get back to the sissification stuff. Right. So, um, what I've noticed, uh, one of my main topics in my DMS on like OnlyFans and everywhere yeah. else is I like to dress like a girl. I like trans. I like to pretend I'm a woman, but I don't resent my maleness. Usually they'll say that I don't mm-hmm. resent my maleness. Like, mm-hmm. what am I? Am I trans? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, if you don't resent your maleness, if you get a sort of post nut clarity yeah. when you're done with this thing that you're doing, this, you know, dressing up in a tutu and, yeah. um, you know, have, having your little girly tea party, then then you probably, because I have a couple of friends, close friends who are actually cross-dressers and no one would know. They're very manly and they don't resent their maleness or their male 
role in this world, they just have a fetish and they acknowledge that. At the same time, this fetish gets in the way of their relationships if they don't have someone who is into it. And even sometimes they'll have someone who is into it and willing to explore. Mm -hmm. They don't see their partner as that, you know, dom, that type of like woman that's going to make them do that. Like, because then there's coerced, forced, encouraged sissification. Part of it is they don't want to take responsibility for wanting this. So it's like, oh, no, don't make me suck a cock. No. That's right. No. That's like, right. You, know, you want it. You just want me to, like, make you. Like, you know, it's a role play. It's all just role play. Business. That's what. That, thank you. This is what people need to hear. They need to understand. And again, whether or not you agree with it, mm-hmm. I believe that on some level, pro doms are therapists. You're like a sexual oh, therapist God. and you help these people mm-hmm. because if not, they're always having problems within their marriage. They're always, you know, and a lot of times they discuss it with their partners and their partner's mm-hmm. okay with it because maybe their partner can't give them that. So mm-hmm. they go to a dominatrix. They get all of this n- stuff out of them. It's, it's not a bad thing. I wish people wouldn't right. judge them for it. It's yeah. not. It's part of who they are, but we mm-hmm. need to get back to what you're saying. And this is cross-dressing, sissification. It's not trans and mm-hmm. they are okay with being men they Mm -hmm. don't so so thank you thank you this is Mm -hmm. such a great conversation thank you it it, of course and it's like um it people who are there's predators everywhere in every sector of the world and they will go where they're less likely to be discovered and sometimes like the church or politics they Mm -hmm. they will protect each other Mm -hmm. um so I mean, I think I researched this correctly. I'm not sure. Are there WPATH members connected to the Eunuch Archives? Yes. Because <laughs> I've been on the Eunuch Archives and there is a child, I mean, child Total. fantasy stories on there, That's including right. snuff. Like, I know. Like, I mean, and, and there's people on the mem. I, and it, it's just, it's very interesting. You know, growing up, everyone was like, the world is run by PDF files. And I was like, that's a little much, but now I'm realizing Hollywood politician based on the data of what people are searching. That's right. It's, it's might actually be true, but it might, no, it W path does when they, when they add a eunuch to W path, that's actually was the thing that the kids bothered me, but the eunuch, I was like, Oh no, we've lost our way. This has Mm -hmm. nothing to do with trans. Mm -hmm. That is Mm -hmm. a fetish. That's a fetish. That is a fetish. That is the nullification of children to make them infantilized permanently. That is, I mean, the church did it forever to make them sing with higher pitched voices. Um, and, and, and then the fantastical parts of it, which I feel like we condemn a lot. Um, so I do some like Fudinari type of fetish stuff too, which for those who don't know, it's like having both genitals. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm a little greedy, but if I had a choice, <laughs> I would have both. Uh, well, I would <laughs> I want the best. I would like fully functional and sure. you know way ahead of for today's time surgically but um another term for it is salmation kind of like dalmation which Mm -hmm. is the um both genitals at the same time and that came from i believe hentai Uh, um wow i didn't know that mm -hmm. i think fudinari because i think it's a japanese word and i think it came from and and i don't think it's a bad thing to allow the creativity of humans Mm -hmm. sexual desires in art or amongst consenting adults to get as wild as you want it. And that is just fine. I think it should be celebrated and explored. And, but you know, you have to let the, the brain grow to us, to an adulthood space. That's right. To be able to take on these things. And no child should ever be around. This is not, 
you this is an adult space mm -hmm. it needs to stay in an adult space it is mm -hmm. a private space no mm -hmm. no one should see this unless they consent to it mm -hmm. all of this is consensual whether or not you like it or not it needs to be in a space that's why i hate when today when i see this is being put in people's mm -hmm. faces with no yeah. consent and no wonder people are getting pissed i'm getting yeah. pissed yeah. and i'm a, the kink at pride kink at pride come on you guys what does kink have to do I, no, nope. I know plenty of people who are gay who are not involved in BDSM. That's you right. don't have to walk everyone on a leash. <laughs> this isn't the Las Vegas Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you must see so much insanity there. <laughs> yeah, you bring your kids there, you know, you know, <laughs> risking, but yeah. Hilarious. yeah. Um. <laughs> wow. Wow. Is hentai for kids? What's the stuff kids are looking at? Ma mag manga or some Maybe, other stuff? So I, I believe anime is anime. the is just cartoons in okay. that style. Right. Like, okay. I don't think that has to do with adult or fetish. Right? Okay, great. And then there's hentai, which is the version of that. Of anime, right? Of anime, I think. Okay. I think and so, then, too. I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe manga is just is actual like books. With yeah, that's right. Actually, they, my son's totally into them, but I looked at them. They're not creepy and weird. They're just like, yeah. cool. I have things. one that might be a little creepy and weird, and I'm going right. to just- But that's I an adult one. This is an adult one. Right. Inside Mari, a, Great. Uh, a sissy cross-dresser story, like a wow. POV. And it's very sad. This made me cry. Wow. This I genuinely feel for these- I'm obsessed with this topic. Yeah. One of my best friends is a cross-dresser. And- okay. And in like this book is just it's about a guy who oh, the incel to trans pipeline. Oh my god. And that too. I can't I could talk about this stuff for I could talk it's crazy. That. But this kind of is 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 a book of like that experience where people, you know, it's like, well, man up or become a girl. Mm. If you can't man up, become a girl. Wow. It's better for society. And that is the basis of the trans maxing manifesto. There you go. Ooh, that stuff drives me crazy. I know. You look, it, you notice how we're going into a hole right now? It just is getting the tra I did one on trans maxing. I did a. Mm -hmm. like, I watched it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating mm -hmm. to me. Uh -huh. It's like, I, you, what? I discovered that months ago and I was just like, what I is know. it? I mean, it's great seeing people actually admit that that's what they're doing. And one is enough. One person is because, you know, people will brush it off. as like, oh, it's just one, it's just happening to one person or small percentage. Of, one is enough. If this is a roller coaster ride and one kid dies on it, it's not like, oh, well, sometimes people die. No, we stop the ride. Great point. We need to step back. We need to look at what everyone's doing and really like see what kind of long lasting damage everyone's causing. Like this is just it's horrific. Great point. I need a, yeah, I need a drink. I know it's it's just it, because now like we're digging the fact. Look again, I'm gonna keep saying it. I don't mm -hmm. care what adults do with their lives, and also mm -hmm. don't put it in my face. Mm -hmm. But do not mm -hmm. touch the mm -hmm. children, you freaks. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. When did we? Do you know? I transitioned 32 years ago. You know, I say mm -hmm. it all the time. Never were we about transitioning children ever, ever. And it's a mental disorder. <laughs> so what? What's happening? You think a four year old knows? It, a 15 year old doesn't even know who they are. How dare mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. gross. Yeah, I think it. people like uh, you said many times, like people hate calling it a disorder, but we have to like, it accept is that we are a sexually dimorphic species. There is an egg and there's a sperm by intention. Some That's people right. don't with the with the intent to reproduce in that way. That's right. Just, just because some people don't, maybe someone has infertility, endometriosis, whatever. The the design is sexual dimorphism. That's so right. there's anything that deviates outside of that. I mean, frankly, so I, I'm bisexual. Mm -hmm. and okay. I, I think bisexual and pansexual have had like a fun little war. Bisexual, for me, I think... I probably am more pansexual if we're really labeled. I love labels. I think labels are important because- Well, they are important, yeah. Words become laws and they affect everything. We have to have the right words, yeah. shared reality words right. for things. Great. But I I think bisexual is more of like, 
people who would date like a cis woman or a yeah. cis man. And then pansexual is like, I don't, it, you could be, you could have a, a dick and titties. And that's right. Also, that's still fine as, as long as I like you. That's right. Uh, but the it, that came from the BDSM community from many, many year, years ago. And now these people, whoever they are, the new community, they took it over. And now if you don't, if you're not pansexual, you're transphobic. I'm like, what? That, that's not what the origin of that word is. But you see how they hijack everything. They mm -hmm. hijack and they try to change the meaning. What you're saying is so important. Mm -hmm. Meaning of words is important. Mm -hmm. It's how me and you walk the world together. Mm -hmm. And I can only understand you if we communicate with these with this language. That's why mm -hmm. language is important. <laughs> what are people talking about? Trying we, to change our language. Yeah, we ha it's, it's called like it's tyrannical and we need a shared reality where we can make laws that That's protect right. everyone. Like right. if we are making... and. It's definitely gotten to, you know, it, the 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 fear that I feel in talking about this is Orwellian. Yeah, it's it's oh, tyranny. It's yes. not fair. It is not okay as a woman, as a femdom, as a female yeah. dominatrix. What is female domination if females don't exist why is there an entire category for people <laughs> that i do like what is that what does that mean and and yeah even what what i what i do as someone who loves wielding the strap on mm -hmm. um there are also femdoms who are trans women mm -hmm. and i love that uh, for me, I see on the scale of like, um, I have a video that is titled "Why Straight Men Love" mm -hmm. on, Great. and it, it's it's like um, it's it's kind of like a girl with a dildo. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like a trans woman. That's right. And that's basically what I am to these guys. That's but, right. Um, I'm more on the fudinari side. Explain to people what pegging is. Can you? Oh. Uh, yeah. it is like strap on play with men specifically straight men mostly. Um, I think it's just anything with okay strap on in, in the peach. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Thank you. But Cause some pe straight, people aren't, mm -hmm. aren't going to understand. Too. Yeah. Straight yeah. guys can straight guys have a G they have a, a G spot right. in their ass. It's not gay That's to right. stimulate there. You're, there is even arguably a G spot in the throat. According yeah. to Tantra and some science, there sure. are people who come from sucking things. Sucking is self-soothing behavior. We That's suck right. on things uh, compulsively when we are stressed, and yes. sometimes it's common. <laughs> would, would you say that majority of your client base is males? Males and straight. Straight identified. males. And mm -hmm. would you say the majority of your uh, customer or base client base is, um, uh, cross-dressing or a huge portion are cross-dressing. Some are trans, some, some are what, um, I guess is called homosexual transsexual. And I don't think they watch my stuff that much. Then okay. there's like bisexual okay. transsexual. And then there's the AGP yeah. autogynephilia for people who don't know that is. Um, being yeah. attracted to yourself as the ideal opposite sex version. For, if I would men. consider that cross-dressing on some level, would right. you not? AGP mm -hmm. and cross-dressing kind of come together. But I think what, yeah. a, for in my opinion, what AGP does is takes it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And then they start to live as the woman, right? Mm -hmm. Where cross-dressers just come see you or do it in a, in a private space and then get their thing out. And then mm -hmm. they go back to living as a, yeah. you know, basically as a man. Yeah, right? I think AGP and I think cross-dressing is, I'm not sure, maybe I would say one might be more, I don't know which, I should learn this, but more yeah. on the sexual side and some on the self-soothing side. Because there you go. One of my friends who's a cross-dresser, he'll just dress up like a girl in his own private time and watch movies and eat ice cream. And That's right. it's yeah. not a sexual thing. It's just like this regression, uh, like coping mechanism yes um, yes so it it can be i mean it's such a such a vast it's complicated 
let's so just be honest here. It's complicated, but it's important that people understand. And I also think mm -hmm. that cross-dressers or AGPs got shamed a lot so that they mm -hmm. di didn't feel comfortable. That's why they now, I think, are crossing into transgender and they're saying right. they're transgender because- And I hate that. Me but too. I don't think it's, it's there's nothing wrong with being a cross-dresser. Like, and, and uh, I think the guy's name is Phil Illy. I don't yeah, want to- I interviewed that. Phil. I think I saw that too. And I haven't I saw, put it out yet for a reason. Okay. okay. I'm, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. even just mentioning him, like, I don't know anything about him really, but I know mm -hmm. that people were so mad. that They're mad at him. They're so mad at him for being like, I am AGP. I dress like a girl because it's fun That's for right. me. And I'm so, and people right. are like, you're a sick fetishist. Like, what would be sick is if he wore, wore lingerie in public and told everyone to call him a sissy slut and like humiliate me, please. Like he's not doing that. He's not doing that, but they're just mad like at him. Were, right. Just because yeah. just like if a guy tells me that he's gay, that's your, you know, your sexuality, your preference. Right. You're not going to just start sucking a dick in front of me. Like if you did, that'd be a problem. So you're not that's right. exhibiting your thing in front of me. You just So like being straight and being gay is a sexuality, but being... AGP is a horrifying, like absolutely yeah, totally. wretched fetish. Like yeah. it's just not. And well, I think the reason why people are so pissed is because certain people are not admitting they're AGP and are right. saying they're women, trans women are women, mm -hmm. you know, like pushing mm -hmm. this woman agenda. Those are the bad people. Mm -hmm. And I will say, so see bad people. I it's so my DMS are full of the people who are like, I lived as a woman and now three years later, I realized that I might just be a sissy cross-dresser. And now I feel bad. Like I have countless DMs of people who wow. are like, I feel bad for taking up these space. Now that I, wow. I speak out a lot more about right. it, I speak with them and they're like, you know, I shouldn't, it, you know, in the egg has to be protected from the sperm. That's right. That's the whole, like, that's the biology of that's it. Right. Like, we just can't deny it. That we have a limited amount of eggs. Yep. We get one per month. And we have to choose who is, the, the result of humanity today is from women choosing who gets to impregnate us and whose oh, baby great. we keep. And then who, and then we have to nurture it after. Great versus, point. Great God's point. Just letting it all loose everywhere. Like we have to be, women have to be responsible. Great point. Um, with the people with the womb, the people producing the eggs, however you want to say it, the That's people producing the eggs have to keep the egg. It wasn't men one day who were like, we need our own spaces. We're scared. <laughs> no, no, of course not. That's it right. was women need our own spaces because otherwise, like if a, a hundred years, 200 years ago, now we have, you know, now we have cameras and security footage and sure. rights, whatever. Sure. 200 years ago, if a woman walked into a room full of men, wow, you're in danger. So you true. might not escape with your womb impregnated by force. On top of that, what if wow. you're in a place like Texas that doesn't allow abortions? I know. Poor so why, why aren't trans women fighting for abortion rights? <laughs> I would yeah. love to see more of that. Because they really want to get into our military, our our, um, our sports and our bathrooms and all of that. Before that, I would prefer to have abortion rights better, but not just federally. I mean, we don't need feminism. So people like Rose Montoya, the alleged abuser predator, Disgusting. so that people like her can flash her new titties at the White House. We need hey. feminism for things like female genital mutilation for child brides. It's a Thank global you. thing. It's Thank not you. just so we can flash our boobs. Well, that's why trans women have no, trans women's idea of women is misogyny in itself. Right. And the way that they, mm -hmm. act, so the trans women we're talking about, I have a lot of trans women friends who are literally like me and you and completely mm -hmm. understand where they come same, from and same. are very biologically. And most of my audience too, even the cross dressers and that's right. fans agree with me. That's right. So we have to keep reiterating that we're talking about a very specific group of people who are ones who somehow have a loud voice and somehow have a huge amount of power to push this idea 
idea or ideology as far as, but they don't have a clue about what it means to be a woman, yet they want to be a woman so bad because it's it's all about sexual stuff to me. It feels very like a woman is this, a woman is, no, that's not a woman. You have no idea. I, I know what a woman is more than they do, clearly, because I'm a, I'm a female. <laughs> and, you know, and you also know that there are not one, there's not one front hole. There's two front holes. Oh, we pee out of one and we birth out of the other. Oh. Just really, one is so small that it's insignificant and men don't want to mention it because they can't fit. Front hole. But you see what's happening is that shit has now gone over into the trans male community. And it's the trans men are pushing this language of front hole, bonus hole, which all came from pornography, by the way. I know because I was part of that back in the day because it stayed in a fetish space. And th these people should be ashamed of themselves for using that language in a, in a normal uh, health setting, ashaming us for our vaginas. Are you insane? Like what? So- so all this is so great because you can see where it's coming from. I've been saying it for so long. This is coming from a fetish space, but they've been opened the door because mm -hmm. so many AGPs got into a space now where they're very powerful. Mm -hmm. I believe that what's her name? Who's the lady? Dr. Levine. Bowers. Or Levine. Oh, they're all, I believe those people are AGP. I do. Me too. I, yes. I think Marcy Bowers is AGP, especially when she was looking at Jazz Jennings genitals as a kid and she was like you could be a porn star let me take some pictures on tv what the hell that's i know sick, sick. what makes you say if you are okay with saying that out loud on television i know what a are doctor. you thinking about in private ew so nasty but then what gee we wonder why people hate trans people right mm -hmm. I, I i hate them because i'm like what you can't talk like that the world is not, not gonna this is a serious illness i have it is an illness it is not normal for a woman mm -hmm. to want to be a man or a man to want to be a woman there's something mm -hmm. going on in your brain yeah. but what i'm trying to prove to the world is it fixed me on some level at 32 years you can't deny that and you can't deny mm -hmm. that i'm a functioning human being in the world and i contribute to society i don't mm -hmm. take from society i contribute and that's why it's important for people to see people like myself mm -hmm. i'm not the only one clearly there's a lot of us but many of us are scared to stand up and be able to speak about mm -hmm. this and it, it's a upsetting imagine if you were being represented who whatever that means by a bunch of wing nuts and you're like but wait a minute we're not all like this like i am <laughs> 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 you know that it's over there. <laughs> but no, so a lot of the guys that I speak to when they're like, What am I? Where do I fall on the spectrum? I ask them, like, how sexual are these fantasies? Are they an identity crisis? Yeah. Or yeah. are they more arousing? And yeah. post not clarity, what does that give you? Do you do you realize like, oh, what am I and where does the shame come from? Is right. it societal? Did, did you grow up with religion like I did? You have a lot of unlearning to sure. do. Like, try to look at it as objectively as possible. And that's really hard when you're suffering from mental disorder. I grew up with, I mean, I for sure could have fallen into this ideology. I didn't wear high heels until I became a stripper. Right. <laughs> right. I was I just like, I preferred to be one of the boys and I got along. I was a class clown. I was always very like aggressive and loud and high testosterone. And mm -hmm. um, I, if, and my boobs grew in very young, very oh. fast for that. I got bullied sure. by the girls and harassed by the boys. And if someone told me, and I started wearing like baggy t-shirts and stuff like mm -hmm. in like middle school. Yeah. And, if someone told me like, well, we could remove those and then no one's going to bother you at 14. I was so, so stupid. Totally. Yeah. I probably would have done it. You would have. I would have probably done it. You totally, if you, you told don't me even... I have a dick. Of I'm course. sure I would have done, I would have done it. The dangerous that part is that you can just do it now. You don't mm -hmm. even need your parents mm -hmm. approval. Mm -hmm. A but doctor. The thing, yeah. The, the thing about like puberty, you have to like puberty is the solution for a lot of gender dysphoria. Like yes. when I became yes. a woman as an adult, once I completed puberty, I realized I became in touch with my womanly side, but growing up, you know, I, I wanted to be one of the boys I hung out with more yeah. boys. And I didn't really, even to this day, I don't have 
as many female friends or even gay. I've never had gay friends. And I realize now I'm just not that feminine. I perf- I'm more perform femininity like for work. If I'm getting paid than I, than I do in regular life. Sure. So it's, yeah, I, I could see how easy it would have been. <sighs> Where'd you grow up? I on so many tangents. Um, so I moved to America when I was five from okay. the Middle East. And then right. I lived in Massachusetts in a very oh. small town, country redneck town. Okay, right. Well, Matt, wow. But it was about 30 minutes away from Northampton, Massachusetts. Okay. And that was the gay capital, lesbian capital of the country for a bit. <laughs> we pioneered some of those gay marriage movements. And That's I was right. hanging around that town. That's where I went to school, actually. So... Great. All my friends were, I went to a arts high school, performing arts high school. Okay. Very hippy dippy. I had a non-binary friend in high school and wow. she actually on different days would come in and be like, today, I feel like a girl. And she would dress like a girl and she'd be like, everybody call me a girl. And yeah. then some other days she would come in and be like, everyone needs to call me a boy. Right. But the, it was confusing for us, even as friends, because we would keep, she kept going back and forth between pronouns. Sure. Like, right, which is the way it is. I mean, that's yeah. actually a real non-binary person, right? Yeah, there. but every few days she was like, this is how I feel now, this is how I feel now. And then, but she would get really upset if we like, the, the gender she was using a few days ago, she isn't using now, but she will sure. be using next week. And that is just her suffering from dysphoria. Totally. So Great. it's hard, like it, you have Great. to give grace to people who are suffering from this. And, and the, thank you. like my, ugh, it sucks. I know it's sad. It's sad because we're just not being just chill out, everybody. But the, it's the fault of the community, as far as I'm concerned. They push mm-hmm. this on everybody to accept it, or else you're going to get canceled, or else you're going to. Mm-hmm. You can't push stuff on people. You know, mm-hmm. you just can't. You find the people who are accepting. You find that space. You move through the world. But when you start forcing people to see you in a way that possibly turns you on or that you're demanding it's never mm-hmm. gonna you cannot demand mm-hmm. people to respect you you and have the to... ones who do demand are fetishes that's right they the, they don't want your consent that's right. your consent turns them off mm-hmm. true sadists want true suffering great point and if you get consent Honestly, I have so many theories. <laughs> no, it makes sense. But it's like, you know, like the mad flasher, mm-hmm. a mad flasher who's going to jump in front of you and just, or, you know, the dick pic guy that sends it. A lot of them, they want, they, they want you to react poorly yeah. because that gets That's them right. off. They want totally. you to yell at them. Yeah. So it's a bait. <laughs> so do you yeah. notice that? Most of this, well, I think I asked you that question before. These are all men, straight men. You don't see women transitioning to men and demanding this. I mean, that started happening, but it's mm-hmm. nowhere near the, the, the most of this stuff is coming from ma- male yeah. to female. And that's just because, you know, women are afraid of men. There are totally. natural predators. There totally. are big creators that we we are wired to be aware of them and yeah. assess whether or not they're yeah. a threat to our womb. And that's right. If they're going to impregnate our eggs, and we're going to be stuck right. looking into the eyes of our abuser through our child oh, forever God. because we live in freaking Texas. Uh, <laughs> all over. I mean, just oh, now. What's the question? <laughs> well, it wasn't really a question. I was just saying, like, <laughs> I mean, it, the majority of the people who are pushing all this stuff and who are angry, yes. who are, are all male to mm-hmm. female, mm-hmm. trans, yeah. or, you know what I mean? So and women, they're, they're, always, women are just conditioned to be like accepting and nice and more, pass, right. more passive. Right. And even if you transition to a man, you're, you know, the X, you know, XY chromosomes, I know people don't really like to go down to chromosomes. Well, I do. It's yeah, science. I'm, I'm fine with that because the Y chromosome has millions of years of sexual aggression right. encoded into it. That's what it is. That's why 95% of violence on planet Earth is caused by males. Thank That's you. not saying 95% of men are violent. That's saying nope. 5%, 5% of men are violent. Or I'm sorry, 5% of Excellent. people are violent. Yeah. And then 95% of that chunk are male. Are men. That's right. Are That's- born with XY are born yeah. with the nature of producing sperm. If we want to get really technical. But why know. do you think they deny the biology for that actual reason right mm-hmm. there? They won't take any 
any um what's the word i'm looking for they won't take it, they won't take it on they won't say yeah, well yeah or facts. i mean that's just the won't. data it's just it's now that fact. we have the internet we see the data and <laughs> you can't just ignore that that's you can't it. and and it's still and you know there are there are people who are agp and trans there sure. are people who are just trans and then sure. there are people who are just agp and cross dressers and where that crosses over is where my dms get flooded and Interesting. The, the people are confused and they come to me and i'm like i'm not a therapist i just play one on tv <laughs> <laughs> i do a lot of like therapy i have a video that's a sissy therapy role play right and it's kind of like a you know fetishy style but it is like genuine questions but it's kind of like like i'm sneaking it into my content but, but you know, your work is important. I don't care what anybody oh. thinks out there. I believe yeah. that your work is important. You know, I was in that world mm -hmm. for many, I was married to a professional dominatrix. I watched all of it. I've been around it close up and personal and it does help these guys. Mm -hmm. It does help. It saves some people's marriages. It helps people kind of Lots. understand where they're at. And mm -hmm. it's so important that people understand that this is a consensual space between two adults who understand what's going on. It's like, you're going to a therapy office. You would pay a regular, like, like therapists sit in the office mm -hmm. and pay them 200 bucks or whatever an hour. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is what you're doing any different than what they're doing? This is mm -hmm. what a, a question I want everybody to think about out there, whether or not you agree with it, mm -hmm. you must understand the importance of it. And if we mm -hmm. actually put people like you in a space that says what you do is important, I think we would have less of the nonsense that's going on today and say, Hey, wait a minute, maybe you should go see a pro dom and sort mm -hmm. of get that stuff out of you and, and, and be happy because I don't think a lot of these, trans women are happy i think they're very angry and disconnected yeah i think i think it's like the the um it, there's like an in-between period and that's where a lot of them will find like my stuff or yeah, um, yeah. other things like yeah the the trans maxing manifesto <laughs> and, um <laughs> which again you know that's what? Discovery period. <laughs> Trans max all you want, but at least you're explaining that you're not really like me. It's why it's important to see the difference. Mm -hmm. That's why I started going back to the use of the word transsexual. Right. So that I could disassociate with that. Because I'm not a fat. This is not fetishizing. I don't fetishize myself in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. I'm happy looking like a man, but I live mm -hmm. in reality. Where I know I'm a female. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is a really important part of my story. I never disconnected from that. It mm -hmm. took me years to understand and to be more accepting of that. And once mm -hmm. I did, like, wow, it just changed everything. When you live in reality, there, there's no nonsense because mm -hmm. you live in reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I think, yeah, people really, like, we, we do have to overthink some things, but other things it's like, yeah. uh, I think a good example someone said to me was like, okay, if you have like a group of women who are about to go, into a nightclub and it's ladies night women get in free right. you got 10 women one of them's a trans woman they're all smoking hot victoria's secret model 10s do you think the management of the club is going to be like whoa right. no 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 that one right there no not allowed but like they just need the visuals for their night like they just want it to look like there's more girls yeah. versus women's prisons <laughs> fully intact males going, I mean, Disgusting. going into women's prison, that's insane. That is it's, so dangerous. Oh my God. It must be protected from the sperm. I mean, every, this is, of, of everything you said, this is one of the most important parts of this conversation mm -hmm. and why mm -hmm. we, so I just, the interview's coming out, I think today or tomorrow, and I did of Amy, who's part of this program that helps women in prison. She came out of prison and she started an organization, Women to Women, it's amazing. Anyway, mm -hmm. where do you see that conversation? These trans women, are showing up fully intact men, okay? Not even making an effort to look like a woman and mm -hmm. saying they're trans. And because of the new law that this sick California idiot people put into, I think it's SB 132 or something. Anyway, if they, mm -hmm. these guys can say they're trans, nobody's allowed to question them. Mm -hmm. And they're showing up to women's prison where she said 92% of the women in prison have dealt with some form of sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now they're confronted by these men who say they're women and they're being just raped. And it's mm -hmm. in, wait do you see this conversation it is going to blow your mind. It's and the most frustrating part, I think for me about that is that they don't want their own spaces. They want women's spaces. They don't want to be othered 
in the gender neutral space, they want to be just like women. You don't have an egg to protect. Yes. If you go into a, if you are feminine presenting and you're like a, you know, hot trans woman, you go into a men's room, you are at risk to be assaulted. Yeah. You're not at risk at, at forced pregnancy. And that's really the difference right. because forced pregnancy in a state like Texas, where you can't even abort, uh, that's the greatest risk to women. That is life ruining. That is one life. Bam. Ruin. Bam. And trans women will never understand that. That's why never. they don't fight for abortion rights. That's why they fight more to get into our bathrooms than they do for abortion rights. And I, you know, what you, can see- I, you can go into my bathrooms once I see the abortion <laughs> rights restored. Like, <laughs> Great point. Great then, point. Then once I'm safe, then yeah. But uh, aside from that. Great point. They don't want the gender neutral. They want our Because they space. want your space. So talking about the prison thing, she also mentioned this is a very, very important part of that. She said the real trans women in prison do not want to go to women's prison. They mm-hmm. want to stay in male prison. They're taken mm-hmm. care of. They have a great life. And they're pissed that these dudes are, and they're most of the, all the dudes being transferred are all sexual predators. They're all in they're- prison. Mm-hmm. They're the right. ones who are attracted to women. There you go. The 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 homosexual transsexuals generally are not as AGP. There you go. They're not. They're mostly identity. It's, That's I'm right. Not, you know, I didn't go to college for this. Just from what I've read, and from none what of us did. People it's, tell me, right? It's, yeah, fa- no, it's common sense. It's fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and, right. And if you're, you know, if you're a homosexual transsexual, yeah, you probably want to be with all the guys. That's right. You're gonna That's be the the spoiled princess amongst them. <laughs> That's what they say. They like they have great life in there. They mm-hmm. they don't suffer. They mm-hmm. actually like being around because you're right. They're homosexual, transsexuals. They're attracted to men. They're not attracted. Mm-hmm. So these are straight dudes. Like these are literally your client base. <laughs> <laughs> Going to women's prison and, and like it's a free for all in there. Mm-hmm. It's so and, sick. And I have um on on my OnlyFans, I have like a three hour vlog of me talking about this. And wow, I, I've had I've had no DMs uh, that I've seen so far of anyone really disagreeing with me. Mm-hmm. There's been a little mm-hmm. bit of um a little bit of like questions, but mostly people are agreeing with me versus mm-hmm. like the straight white vanilla chai Becky calling me a transphobe. Totally. I've, I've centered my life okay. around this topic for a long time. <laughs> right I have on. close friends who suffer with this. I mean, I wear, I, I'm, don't even. No, those are the ladies, the allies that are ruining it for all of us. It's like, yeah. shut up, sit down. You don't know anything you're talking about. You're tra- calling me transphobic. Those oh, are the people God. that call me. Like, are you insane? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's so twisted the whole, but it was all a plan. I really, I'm not, I do believe all of this has been building and bubbling for years Mm -hmm. and then snap, we just, they got it. They started adding people to our government. They started Mm -hmm. giving these people power. Mm -hmm. The ones in power now are sick, weirdo freaks, Mm -hmm. angry, hate women. You you Mm -hmm. can just see the the way they attack JK Rowling. Are you insane? Oh, oh, (laughs) I loved her. I love her. She's great. Harry Potter. And all she is saying That's is right. that women is at the root. The egg must be protected from the, the sperm. Egg must be That's really from all sperm. she's saying. And frankly, right. as a female dominatrix, even like I, I don't actually believe um, women are superior to men or that men are superior no. to women. That's, That's a right. role play. Like, I think we're two halves of a whole. We, are, you know, unite to create. Um, that's our purpose. And anything that deviates outside is, of that is also normal. It might right. not be as common, but it's not right. weird. It's not bad. It's just, right. a th- it's a thing that happens very often. That's right. So, and it's, it's okay. It's okay, it's to, totally be gay. okay. It's to be It's okay to be all of these things. And I, I think we're getting a massive overcorrection because the, the people are starting to, to, to push it like that, tr- that, trans woman in Canada with her massive Z cup, <laughs> Z cup titties with the hard, the hard nips on them. Too. Oh my God. It's a fact. In it's front a of fetish. students. In, front, in the high school, in front of the kids, that is a pedagogistic public humiliation. Yep. Sissification. Right. Thank fetish, you. I said you it from the get go. But you know, mm-hmm. I think it came out that he was yeah. actually just a dude making a point. I think it came out that he wasn't even like that and that he got like, it, it all came out that he was a fetishist and he wasn't. Yeah. 
it, he, I somehow I can't remember the story, but I'm going to look into it again because I did huh. a little thing on it. But I think it came out to where and the students. I oh, I did do one, and the students were like, "I can't believe that they allow this in our school." Even the students were like, "No, we don't want to." And see he was it. like, "You know what? I can't believe it either. Look at what I'm getting away with." That's right. And that, <laughs> that see, see, I actually have more. If that's the case, like, you have for that because frankly, that's my. Those are the people that are in my DMs. They're like. That's a fetish. That Canadian. Right. I mean, the the prosthetic with the nips. Oh my god! In front of seventeen year old boys. In front of, in front of high school boys. What do you Disgusting. think they're going to do? Oh, I know. So oh, I hate it so much. It's so as as Has much the as school you school defended that. I know Canada's out of control. Canada's worse than America, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Massachusetts it's is close. It's up there. <laughs> and now we have in Massachusetts. There's a middle schooler who wore a shirt to school that said, there are only two genders. Oh. He got suspended. I'm sure you heard about that yeah. one. And now his parents are suing the school. The school's like counter suing. Like, Good, sue him. I would. We're, okay, we're not, there's not only two genders. There's two sexes. That's right. There's two That's sexes. Right. There's an right. egg and a sperm. Thank there's you. intersex, which is unrelated, unrelated to trans. Completely unrelated. Intersex is a mix of the two. Thank you intersex <laughs> sexual dimorphism there's Thank only you. been around 30 recorded cases of variety of mixed genitals mm -hmm. and only one person in history who has produced both sperm and eggs at different times Great. as a child he had eggs then they stopped producing when he hit puberty Great. then the sperm started producing great so really really cool i mean that's that's it is Stop. fascinating but it's very small and now they try to push mm -hmm. that's that that's where that whole thing mm -hmm. came in assigned female or male but that comes from right. the intersex that's community intersex language then that's they right. that they hijacked for themselves that's right and intersex people have nothing to do with nope. trans people and they don't want to be used as cannon fodder that's right for this argument it's disgusting they, it's they're so very disgusting. objectified by these, especially non-binary people. Oh, like, it's just so you know, entitled. Like they're so entitled. It's so gross. Mm -hmm. We've given these, these people kids are actually oh. suffering. I mean, you oh. know, gender dysphoria is is actual suffering. But you know, to yeah. have to be born with a ball sack and a vagina, that right. is actual intersex. That That's is right. assigned at birth. That's right. Bam. <laughs> you were observed, or a, you know. <laughs> You see what they're doing? They're changing our language to benefit them so that they could say they're really women. Like, mm -hmm. no, you're not. You're not a woman, dude. You're a dude mm -hmm. who wants to be a woman. Who cares? Nobody cares. If you admit that, I admit it. Guess what? The world's totally accepting of me. You know that. I walk the world mm -hmm. free. People are so cool with me. It's mm -hmm. the trans community that doesn't like me, which mm -hmm. should say everything to everyone out there. Okay. I don't have a problem with people. They totally accept me. So why is the trans community so mad at me? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's They're funny. Either, either ignorance or mal malice. That's malice. what I realized. It's either yep. ignorance slash brainwashing, yep. uh, sheep cult-like mentality, yep. herd mentality, or it's actual malice. They actually want to blo puberty block the kids, put them uh, on cross-sex hormones, sick. cut their breath cut their breasts off at 16. And now it's all coming around. You know, they're suing hospitals. Uh -huh. These kids are like mm -hmm. D trans or what you said, I think earlier, desisting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like good what? for them. Good, good for them. But now what? So I have a great friend, Chloe Cole, who's, yep. you know, she's great. She's an awesome mm -hmm. young lady who just mm -hmm. suffered from all of this. And now what? So what? She's going to sue Kaiser. So what? She's never going to have breasts again. She, I think mm -hmm. it totally messed her whole reproductive. She probably mm -hmm. can't even have mm -hmm. a baby. So, yep. you know, yeah. whether or not she's going to sue and all that, what about her life? Yeah, she still has to live like this now. And what is why is one person not enough to take a step back? Why is, why do we need so many people suffering? And why? on top of that, for the trans people to be like, well, it's a, the transitioners are a very small group. They, it's a small wow. group. You're a small group. Thank you. Trans people are a small group, but the rest of the world has to care. Okay. So we will care, but then you have to care about the minority within the minority. That's there not fair. That's actually evil. It's evil. That's sick. Well, that is so, so like sociopathic. Really. I know. To expect people to care about you, but you don't care. I mean, 
It's so cult like the whole thing. Well, no, like, because these little young people are being brainwashed. Mm-hmm. They're so being brainwashed. You know, it's upsetting to me. I, I I hate it. I hate it being trans. And that's why it's just like, no, these kids need love. They need acceptance. They need to be told, be non conforming. That's awesome and cool. Mm-hmm. It's better mm-hmm. than just like, you yeah. don't need to have your boobs cut off and they're normalizing mm-hmm. it. You know, the London Pride, which I was been a part of for years, is disgusting. They put a huge poster of a young, girl okay who's now a non-binary with her boobs cut off and her scars hanging out and it says they them we are everywhere i i got chills i'm like that is so gross and cult-like we are everywhere it's it's almost like i mean what i don't even some things i I don't even want to say what i really think about that but i know it's sick for sure this in hindsight is going to be just such a great medical i mean people trusting big pharma and Mm. trusting Mm. like you know trusting the science and stuff Mm. when have we ever what look at what they've done to our children in the past that's right what they've done the drugs the the ritalin the adhd the 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 child hollywood stars the you know the girl they've done so many horrific things to those kids they had kids smoking cigarettes and addicted drugs at, at The, the world is full of sick, sick people and they Clearly. infiltrate everywhere and especially where they're protected. And that is Hollywood, politics, the church, and now this ideology, which wow. I will call it an ideology. It is an ideology. You can't mess with children's puberty. How dare you even do that? That's non-consensual. And then putting it on top of a parent to make that choice. Like people, we need to have some compassion for the parents Mm -hmm. because they are being led down a wrong path. And if someone Mm -hmm. said to me, your child will will off themselves if you don't do X, Y, and Z, of course you're going to be like, Mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, yeah, definitely jab them with that because yeah. Or or we will take them away. There you go. Jab them with that and we'll send them to freaking Montana to some institution where we gay conversion or oh um oh where we God. turn them all back to normal how did, how did we yeah. get here cobra how did we get into such this space such an overcorrection yeah i mean yeah <laughs> I it, lightly. it just uh. doesn't it just scares me beyond belief because mm-hmm. because we all see it let's just mm-hmm. not deny that we all F and see it. Mm-hmm. But many of us, I get I get letters and DMs and all from all kinds of people telling me, thank you so much. I can't speak up. Thank you so much. You know, I think we said that earlier. Mm-hmm. And I just think to myself, yeah, I get it. But that yeah. sucks. It but sucks. I, it's a bit it, like it's ca- it's cowardice in one way, but it's also like you might lose your kids in your job if you or speak your job. Up. Like and, and and everything, your reputation canceled forever. Like that professor who now he, I forget what his name, where he totally, worked, but you totally. know, just, just for speaking out. So that's why I was like, you know what, this, I think this is becoming like almost an, uh, I feel like I'm obligated to speak because I can speak my, everyone knows what I do in my life. Thank I don't you. care if you cancel me. This is, this femdom is the thing. <laughs> I'm a, you're not going to get canceled because you can't. The whole point of my thing is female domination. <laughs> what do I even do now that females don't exist? <laughs> I mean, the thing that's so great, though, I have to say that thank you for stepping up and thank you for speaking out and thank you for thank giving you. us a perspective from your point of view because it's so important. It plugs, it literally is going to plug in for many people to understand what's actually happening here. Mm-hmm. And they don't want you to speak out. That's why mm-hmm. it is important. But mm-hmm. I do get why some people can't. And I never want anyone to put themselves in a dangerous position. Right. I never want. Right. But my, I guess my point is it's so sad it that is. people feel that they cannot say their opinion mm-hmm. about something because they, mm-hmm. you know, they tried to counsel me so many times, mm-hmm. so many, you know, on some level, my business did take a hit and things did get, but you know what? I just said, nope, I'll figure out another way. I've survived like this forever. I can always Mm -hmm. figure out how to maneuver that, but I'm Mm -hmm. 62. I'm not 20, right? When you're 20 and you get canceled, it's heartbreaking and it's Mm -hmm. horrifying. Mm -hmm. And it's so many things that, you know, and when you lose your job or lose your Mm -hmm. children or Mm -hmm. they've infiltrated and made such a powerful space. But I think because people like you are stepping up now, we're starting to crack that nut, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I do get I do get a bit of like this. I get discredited a bit because of like, oh, she's like an OnlyFans girl. But it's like, if I you don't care. look at what I, I actually do, 
it is it's not like hey i'm hey baby you up send me nudes it's like totally people, people who are messaging me stuff like i i've sent out this hotline so many times because i'm like i don't know how to help you thank you this is hurting me i'm not equipped i'm not trained for this i and they're like oh well, i don't need therapy i can talk to you and i'm like no <laughs> no <laughs> That's not fair to me. That's right. I'm doing my best. I'm trying my best to learn as much as I can to give people all the information I can. And then it's mm -hmm. still sometimes wrong and I'll say something. And then months later I look back and I'm like, oh, I don't agree with that anymore. Mm -hmm. But I said it and then people might, and then now it feels misleading. And, and, that's okay. That's okay because mm -hmm. we all don't know. Even me, I don't yeah. even know. But sometimes we do say things. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's yeah, okay. As long as we evolve and we change and we learn that's and right. we change and stuff. Because I did that's used right. to at one point say like, oh well, men, yeah, trans women can go in our bathrooms. And then I was like, me well, too. Because no, me too. Yeah, and and when you don't think about it, it's like, yeah, of course it's not a big deal. But then it's like the egg has to be protected from the sperm, especially in places like Texas. And that's just nationally. We're not even yes. talking about globally. No, so, that's right. And also things change. They, they aren't the same as they were before. Trans women did try to pass. And the trans women who didn't never went into the women's bathroom, right? When I didn't pass as a man, I never went in the men's room. I never did those things. I didn't go in the locker room. I didn't do those mm -hmm. things. That's a true transsexual. You understand your space and you navigate the world to not make people get uncomfortable. You don't want people to be uncomfortable around you as a transsexual. You want people to just, you want to blend in. That's mm -hmm. how you can see the difference. They just want to rah, go in the woman's room blah, and take pictures of themselves. You know, turfs can eat this. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since when are you talking about women like that? Mm -hmm. It might be part of a humiliation. <laughs> yes, I, I don't said. know. <laughs> Because they, they might just post that knowing that everyone's going to get mad and totally. And they're like, eh. <laughs> okay. me and you know it because we live in that space. And we, it's hard to believe it. when you don't see that and That's when you true. don't actually, like, I don't get off on being humiliated. No I way. can't comprehend that. Ugh, yeah. Try. Totally. I mean, but I, but I see it every single day. So, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I, then when I see, um, who was that? Who was that comedian that started jerking off in front of a bunch of people? Oh yeah, what was, God, what was his name? Oh yeah, I know who you're Carl talking about. Carl something. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Louis C.K. That's right. He got Louis caught like this jerking, like just randomly, totally. like dozens of women, and I was like, that is a public humiliation fetish on a global scale, on top of yep. the non-consensual disgust. That's he right. wanted. It's almost like it was maybe a stretch. But it's almost like he got famous in order to destroy everything. You never know. No, that's a fetish in itself. To, to, Imagine, to... like, because it's like, okay, you got one person humiliating you. Like, you got me yep. making fun of you. That's so hot, turns you on. Yep. What if it's the whole world? Oh, God. Wow. That is so... Wow. Uh, what Profound. is more arousing? What that's is right. more arousing? If you have a humiliation fetish, what is more arousing than the entire planet? humiliating you so you have to look at like remember what's his name weinstein that dude mm -hmm. who was doing that to all those chicks forcing mm -hmm. himself it's all that mm -hmm. uh cosby another one all these yeah. dude people in hollywood are just you know there's so many there's uh, that other dude hammer something hammer where he was mm -hmm. doing weird stuff like they're all these mm -hmm. dudes are getting off on this humiliation and doing this to women and and mm -hmm. and like it's just a slap on the hand <laughs> Right. Cosby yeah. got out of jail. Weinstein's probably going to get out of jail eventually too. He's out of jail. Cosby's out of jail. I think Weinstein is like a, a, like going through some trial thing to like get some stuff taken down. And said that he, yeah, yeah of course, yeah, these are powerful men. What a surprise, right? Yeah, I mean, these are powerful men with a lot of money. Them don't go to jail, so you know, like that guy Brock Turner who the girl behind a dumpster, and he didn't go to jail. There you go. He had affluenza. He was so spoiled <laughs> with his richness that he couldn't possibly understand. Yeah, the that's right. Rose like, Montoya. Rose Montoya, a mm -hmm. male. A F male. off, people. A male mm -hmm. doing that. The, the consequences of showing your tits in public. Oh my you. god! And then, and then, and then, totally uh, saying trans men. Yeah, and then saying trans men who 
are female. Female. Yeah. That's right. And believe me, it's more prevalent in our community than people want to talk about. I've been around a long time. Mm-hmm. It's been happening for a long time. It's been on. People don't want to put it out there because they're scared mm-hmm. that people will hate trans. I like we've got to talk about this. It's been going on for a long yeah. time. It's all tied together. That's the right. Screaming, the the lolly, Lolita stuff. That's right. That whole thing. I mean, the like I'm in the gaming world a lot mm-hmm. too. I go to these oh, wow. conventions and yeah. I saw that you did an interview with cosplay. Apple. The cosplay, cosplay, role play, gaming. That's right. Furries, uh, <laughs> fantastical, living in a fantasy. Yeah. The fantasy right. world, creating it and living in it. That's yep. video games. Video games. Now. My mom is a hardcore gamer and the game she showed me. Yeah, she plays these cool. games where you can you can create your own. Um, oh, there like, you go. You can create your own like gendered person. Oh, my God. And you can mix the genitals. Oh, my God. And she was showing me, she's like, look, he has like boobs and a penis. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, that's cool. It, it is. It, it is cool. But I'm like, this is, this is where, this is where it's going. And, and I think, you know, it, it is great. Like I said, the creativity and the mm-hmm. fantasy, like people should Agreed. definitely be exploring that. Agreed. But then it's like, uh, how, you know, this, the demand does create the supply. Yes. The demand does like at the end of the day, like, Right. They're not just people aren't just making this. No. I'm not just making this content. The demand is demand. Insane. That's right. That's I what see the numbers. Oh no, of course. I 100 percent know that. It started back in the day when I was doing it, and it's still it just grew, grew, grew because of all the gaming. But that being said, again, adult space is not mm-hmm. the same as children's space. They mm-hmm. should not be giving children the opportunity to put boobs and a dick on a little character. You know, I'm so, my kid plays that shit. I'd be pissed if I saw him making his character with boobs and a dick. I'm like, what, mm-hmm. dude? Come on, man. You're supposed to just be playing Halo and like mm-hmm. fighting people, and, like punching them out, not like. My non-binary boob dick 11-year-old's doing that <laughs> is twisted. I'm the most open-minded person probably besides you, right? But no, sure. kids kids For are sure. off limits. Just off stop, limits. stop, 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 people. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to have to end. I could talk to you for hours Same. and hours. And you're mm-hmm. a really sweet human. And I feel very connected to you, friend. And I think Me we're going to be friends. And um, I do appreciate you stepping up and having this conversation. It's going to mm-hmm. give people a chunk of something I think that they're not understanding because these people aren't in our world and they don't understand mm-hmm. these things and, mm-hmm. and and they get a different perspective on things. But when someone like you steps up and says, well, wait a minute, I know exactly this is what's happening in front of my face here. And I can mm-hmm. give you a little more perspective. This is my job. And maybe this, we can. I'm an expert in this. You if are. I- you are. And also maybe mm-hmm. we can give a um, a little compassion you know, so, mm-hmm. so these cross-dressers can come back to just being cross-dressers and not feel like they have to be trans right. they and feel like they have to be they, they feel do. like because they like the cross-dressing then they must be, be trans. trans that's they right can't just be a femboy and you know we that's right. we we don't think enough about like protecting femboys in thank in, you in men's spaces thank that's you that's a whole nother that's a whole other conversation you can have. Yeah, yeah, let's have that as well. So mm-hmm. so with that, everybody, please leave Cobra beautiful comments that you always do. I appreciate that very much. And not, you know, whether or not you agree with her, just, you know, be compassionate to the fact that she stood up to this and is trying to help us get back to a sense of normalcy. You said some very powerful things today, and I, I'm so happy that you came onto the show. And with that, that's why I get these awesome, because you out there helped me build this channel and we create this community to sort of push back mm-hmm. on this nonsense and get back to a sense save the kids <laughs> let's just save the kids <laughs> they're in trouble right now and and women's mm-hmm. rights so i'll see you guys all on wednesday on the live and thanks for joining us like subscribe send this to people and i'll see you guys on the next one